Okay, so we'll start from the last class. Last class we already started uh, the last chapter on other welding processes, right? So we looked at two process processes and that are considered. I mean, not the conventionally used in arc welding process, GMIW, GTIW, things like. The one, the first one you saw is electro slag welding, isn't it? So it is, it is technically is not arc welding process. So we use the arc initial to melt the flux. Okay, so once the flux is molten, and the flux starts filling. It will have a contact with the the electrode, the filler. So and then the current which is actually passed to the filler, as well as to the uh, the the flux would heat up the the subsequently the flux which is added, and forming a slag. Slag temperature will be much higher. Okay, the temp, temp will be much higher than the melting point. So it, it end up it ends up melting the. Uh, the material, the filler, what you have inside, and then you fill the well cavities by the molten filler, and subsequently you can also move the the water cooled copper shoes, which actually holds the slag and the liquid metal, and the the structure solidifies as a cast structure, right? So because of the volume, you can melt uh, the the filler, you can add, you know, you can have a uh, much larger well cavities filled. So electric slag welding is very commonly used to weld uh, thickest cross sections. Right, so we looked at, uh, and then subsequently, the second process is MIAB. So the MIAB welding, MIAB, uh, MIA, uh, MIAB. Okay, so the MIAB welding is widely used for making the joints of uh, 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 the super alloys, for example, uh, for uh, very high temperature applications, as well as some strategic applications for uh, power plants, uh, reactors nuclear reactors because the joint here we made it is in technically it is soil state joint. Okay? So the, the, the problem associated with the hot cracking during solidification or segregation would leading to uh, uh, subsequent uh, coal cracking, uh, uh, hot cracking or uh, ductility dip cracking and those kind of problems can be avoided using uh, uh, the mechanical uh, deformation induced joints. Okay, so the joint integrity will be much high, much better if you have mechanical deformation uh, making a coil sense. So that is why the MIAB it is uh, uh, seen as a very attractive process to weld uh, the pipes of a thicker section, thicker cross section, wall thickness pipes, right. So we, look, we looked at the video as well and MIAB, right. And then uh, the third welding process we were looking at it by the time you know, it was over uh, the classes. So the third one was thermit welding, okay. It is also known as so alumino thermic welding. <coughs> and so, this is one of the, uh, the uh, oldest welding processes uh, and we have been using it even now for uh, various applications. One of the main applications is welding of railways. Okay, so, railways are welded using uh, an alumino thermic process. The principle is so, when, uh, when a metal oxide is uh, burnt with aluminum. So aluminum reduces metal oxide, it becomes aluminum oxide because of the affinity of oxygen to aluminum. Okay, aluminum have a much higher affinity for oxygen than uh, um, any other metal oxide. Okay, so you oxidize aluminum, and uh, the aluminum oxidation is a highly exothermic process. So enormous amount of heat is released, and during this process, the metal oxidase which got reduced, and then producing metal, the metal would melt, forming a liquid metal. Right. So, as I said, the thermit welding is, uh, is widely used for welding railways. So, I have given an, an, a cross section of an, an a railway. So, this is a railway line, isn't it? Yeah. So, the typical shape. So, basically, so you have uh, uh, you have to make a joint. So, this is a cross section, isn't it? So, there will be another line coming from here. We will see the video, it will be very clear. And then you have uh, an, a container which is actually generally known as a crucible okay? and the crucible inside crucible you fill it with thermit mixture. So thermit mixture is metal oxide and aluminum okay? and then now uh, the, the metal oxide and aluminum is mixed and you ignite <coughs> with an igniter. The moment you give, uh, uh, you burn, you start burning uh, uh, the, the, the mixture and aluminum would readily oxidize <coughs> leading to the formation of molten metal. But metal of uh, either, uh, say if you use iron oxide, it is molten iron would start forming would, um, uh, here in the bottom and then uh, the resultant aluminum oxide would tend to go 
float as a slag. So, advantage of this process is the aluminum oxide which is actually forming, it is less denser than the liquid ion. Aluminum oxide would tend to float or form as a slag, la slag layer. It will start protecting the liquid metal which is there in the bottom of the crucible. And subsequently, uh, there will be a uh, opening and which would open up and, and this opening would actually uh, work based on the principle that the moment the temperature goes above a certain temperature, it will crack and then liquid metal would start filling the well cavity. Yes, it is clear. And subsequently, once the well cavity is filled and the, the crucible, the mold can be broken out and then uh, excess material will be shaved off. Yes, it is clear and, uh, and then the moment you have the weld, you can also like you know, do in a simple grinding, make sure that there is there are no sharp edges and ultimately the once you are done uh, uh, and weld would be as good as any cast structure. Yes, it is clear and this can be basically it is like in a keeping in a container of liquid metal. Okay, either it can be kept on top or it can be side. So, you will have a runner and a riser okay, so leading to uh, liquid metal transporting from uh, uh, crucible uh, to the well cavity. Right? It is clear. As I said, this process is very widely used for uh, welding, welding of uh, railways. Okay, so, often we have to go and certify the welders who are actually uh, welding in railways. Uh, and uh, no, when you are going over there, I mean, we will have to make sure that they are doing it properly and then uh, we will have to take care of it. So, one such incident, uh, now when uh, I went there to certify welders in Germany, okay, so I made this video. And uh, so, these welders were actually certified to weld uh, a German high speed railways. So, these are the rails what I am talking about, is not it? Okay, so, what you see over here is the container. So, what we are going to see in this video is the first preheating the, uh, the mold or the crucible, right? And then these two rails are going to be joined by the thermite welding process, right? So, I am going to mute it because uh, uh, these welders are speaking uh, in Dutch. And uh, yeah, if some of you know Dutch, I mean, I mean, welders speak their own language all the time, right? So please ignore that. So right now, the the the, the crucible, the mold is preheated. So generally, the mold is uh, uh, like in a simple sand, green sand mold, and compacted. And this contains a thermite mixture. And you can't buy it just like that. You need a license to buy that because it's very explosive material. Okay. So the preheating is done, and they will check the temperature. So, this is a thermite mixture. Okay, so you can slightly forward it. So, preheating is done. Okay, so we are going to put a cap on that. So, this is the preheat heated mold, you see that inside. So, that is the well cavity. So, this is the mold, and inside you will have a well cavity. So, after preheating, we are closing the mold, and then the thermite mixture is kept on the top of it. Okay, so that is the igniter, what he has in the hand. So, you burn the igniter, it is like a firecracker. You have igniter on top of firecracker, right? The same. So, so he is inserting the, the igniter inside. So, he was my colleague. So, now the reaction is happening. Okay, so so upon uh, 
yeah so reaching a steady state so you would see the liquid metal started pouring down from the bottom cavity towards the the mold and these are all either runners and risers on the side so now it's done so the reaction is done so quickly so from you see the liquid metal flowing sound Yeah, so now it's done. So now the the entire mold and the well cavity is filled with liquid metal. So upon um, solidification, the mill the, the wall can be broken. Sorry, uh, okay, yeah. So so once the the, the solidification is done, and uh, the the mold wall will be broken. and the excess material will be removed using an a simple uh, uh, blade yes it's clear so we'll go back to the schematic again so what is over here the, the video is the, the schematic of that process is shown over here in this case so we had an a thermite box on top and the railways line so which is going to be joined is actually going to be joined by the the thermite reaction so it is the iron oxide plus aluminum is burnt and the liquid iron which is actually formed at the the the, the bottom of the crucible is going to be flown to the well cavity and then subsequently the moment the solidification is happening so we can take this off and then we can also take the bottom the risers and then the moment you uh, you know take everything out you won't see any even uh, fusion joint okay so the weld will be as good as uh, and a continuous cast structure so so this is the, the the typical rail is about you know uh, i mean the varying sizes the one which we used over there it's about 7 to 8 inches okay and then you can weld the entire uh, the uh, length and width of the weld in a single pass isn't it because the container is going to send as much as liquid metal you want you can also have a bigger larger uh, thermit container which would give you more liquid metal which can be filled in much larger cross sections right so based on the need either you can do it in a, in a horizontal position or you can also do it in vertical positions where you can also have a runner which could transport the liquid metal from the container and to the the well cavity right so you can watch some more lot of videos in uh, my home page in youtube because uh, you, know, you can also see from the beginning okay from uh, preparing the weld edges Uh, preheating and then uh, upon uh, uh, welding breaking of uh, the molds subsequently removal of excess material everything you can see there okay i don't want to spend much time on that okay so the reaction what you see over here is the exothermic reaction of reduction of iron oxide or metal oxide by aluminum lead to aluminum oxide and then leading to uh, <coughs> generation of excess heat in exothermic reaction would melt the metal which is reduced and then this liquid metal would fill the well cavity right so this can readily be used for uh, welding uh, making an i liquid iron or liquid copper okay in fact in liquid copper you generate more heat than re uh, reducing uh, um, the iron oxide by aluminum this clear the process how it works so next time if you go to railway station if some people are working just have a peep and they must be doing this okay so i have seen in several times even from my childhood you know, uh, whenever we go to railway station and you you not allowed to go inside but you would see you know the boxes tin containers of uh, thermite and they would be welding uh, the railway lines using this process thermite welding right it's good that this sort of this process is enormous amount of heat you put it in and uh, so nowadays in the right speed rails uh, these are all made uh, carbide free by night cfb wells okay so they are all highly toughened microstructure with uh, proper um, heat treatment and the composition control so those kind of uh, railway lines and you can't use a thermite welding so then the ultimately here the microstructure will be cast microstructure okay so if you use thermite welding then um, yeah the weld would always be uh, brittle and the most of the accidents uh, in railway lines happens because of the fault in the track okay so if you have any crack at the weld joint then you have serious problem right so we'll have to make sure that when you are uh, doing welding so the the 
of course uh, the rail, our railway uh, compositions rail compositions are uh, still we are using british compositions atfit steels for example i manganese steels and uh, they are simple uh, 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 yeah ferritic palatic microstructure so those kind of microstructural steels you know you can use thermit welding because a weld would have a much higher hardness better hardness than the uh, base material so suppose uh, we are changing from uh, say simple i manganese steel to carbide fibrinate steel so this thermal welding is not feasible so you'll have to go for uh, either flash bird welding or uh, laser arc hybrid welding okay so so there are some uh, railway tracks uh, which are actually pre cast or pre made pre weld okay so we would be you know making an uh, about say half a kilometer uh, length of a railway line railway track and those are all most likely flash bird welded and then they would be taken to field and then installed subsequently they are thermit welded okay right so in most of the cases uh, uh, if you look at our indian railway tracks the welds were all thermit welded okay good any questions so far